Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is the one only Pop Culture Junkie here to share with you my predictions for the greatest Royal Rumble. That's right. We've got a network and pay-per-view special coming up this Friday in the middle of the day. Okay, this is taking place in Saudi Arabia, of course, so it's a way on the other side of the globe. And it takes place at their time, 7 o'clock, but it's going to be like 11 o'clock when it starts my time here in the central time uh, in the States. Now, of course, this is a big, giant pay-per-view they've been promoting very heavily on Raw and SmackDown, almost to the point where I am just sick of the Greatest Royal Rumble before it's even happened, because it seems to be the main focus. Now, okay, let's look at it this way. The Greatest Royal Rumble is basically a international house show, live event, whatever you want to call it, but they've decided to blow it up into some gigantic uh, show uh, for whatever reason, I'm sure there were a lot of financial reasons uh, that were the main motivation for the show. Uh, but basically, when you look at the card, you're going to be like, why is this not a WrestleMania or a SummerSlam or Survivor Series, whereas it's being called, quote, Greatest Royal Rumble? Okay, there's a lot of issues I have with this, and I'm going to try to blow through this real fast to get to my predictions. But here we go. They're calling the show the Greatest Royal Rumble because they're going to have a 50-man Royal Rumble match. That's going to be one of the matches at the show. So they're going to have basically every single male superstar that they have employed. Possibly some surprise entrants. We'll get to that in a minute. So they're going to have 50 men in this Royal Rumble, okay? Not Battle Royal, okay? Now, if you think back, and I remember long ago, we had 20-man Battle Royals all the time in the, in the 80s, throughout the early 90s. They had on a house show or live event show that they aired on Raw one night uh, back in the early 90s when Raw just started. It was a 40-man Battle Royal, okay? Which, again, the Battle Royal is where you have all the participants in the ring at the beginning of the match. The bell rings. The last one in the ring wins. No, they're doing a 50-man Royal Rumble, which means we're going to have 50 entrances... Okay, you're going to have 50 different times. You're going to have a countdown for an entrance. Or, I'm sorry, you're going to have 48 times because you're going to have the first two guys come out. And then you're going to have 48 times. You're going to be counting 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, etc. That's going to be crazy. And I'm sure they're going to have to do it like in every 30 to, I'd say, what, 30 seconds to maybe a minute max. Uh, used to be it'd be like a two-minute gap between entrance. It's going to take almost two hours to get everybody into the match, let alone have the match. So that's one complaint I have, okay? I think, honestly, they should have just done a giant battle royal. Just put everyone in the ring at, at the beginning and let them just fight, fight, fight. Do that, okay? But it also really takes away from the Royal Rumble. Let's talk about that real quick. We just had WrestleMania, and I already posted my recap and review of WrestleMania. You can go check it out. And I shared with you my feelings on everything. And look at look, let's look at it this way. WrestleMania, you have the women's Royal Rumble winner and the men's Royal Rumble winner, okay? Both challenging for uh, title belts, obviously, right? They both lost. So this year's Royal Rumble winners for both matches lost their opportunities at WrestleMania, okay? They lost their title matches. So that was a wash. And then now we have the greatest Royal Rumble being advertised for this Saudi Arabia show. And what do they win? They get a trophy, okay? It says meaningless as the Andre the Giant Battle Royal or that uterus looking thing that the women fought for at WrestleMania in their Battle Royal. This just does not make any sense, okay? If they're going to hype it up to be such a grand uh, match, there needs to be some kind of bigger prize for the winner, whether it's a title match or a spot in a main event for the big pay-per-view later this year, something. There is nothing of importance to make me really care who wins this match because obviously, okay, they're going to win a trophy, but what else are they going to do after that? They're just going to have a trophy. Uh, are they going to carry it around like they do the Andre the Giant you know, Memorial Battle Royal trophy uh, for the first you know, few weeks and then they just kind of forget about it? It just doesn't make sense. So we have a pay-per-view slash network special. Okay, It is available on pay-per-view and the WWE Network. Uh, so you can check it out either way if you're a subscriber to that network or not. But you can check it out that way. And again, it's going to be 7 o'clock in Saudi Arabia time at night. And it'll be whatever time your time is in the States. Uh, my time will be about 11 o'clock it starts. And I think they also mentioned there's going to be some kind of pre-show or kickoff show as well. So probably start another hour on top of that. So let's go ahead and just look at the card and let's go over the matches. And I'll just share with you my thoughts and predictions here. So we have a total of 10 matches advertised. This is in no particular order. I'm just going off of the list I have here. 
We've got The Undertaker versus Rusev in a casket match. If you were paying attention to the past few weeks, originally it was Rusev versus Undertaker. Then for some reason they advertised Jericho, and now it's back to Rusev because apparently Lana did some kind of persuasion to get her man back in that match. I don't know. Obviously, Undertaker's there because they're doing this big, giant show in Saudi Arabia. I'm sure they probably were saying, hey, if we bring you over here, we want, you know, these stars. And obviously, Undertaker is the legend that he is. So he's going to be there. He's going to be in a casket match. It's a great match for him to be in because he doesn't have to do a whole lot. His presence alone is going to pay off for whatever people pay for uh, to see him. So the match obviously is not going to go very long, and Undertaker is going to win. There's no way Rusev's going to beat the Undertaker in a casket match. Uh, no, just not going to happen. Next up, we have John Cena versus Triple H in a match that means absolutely nothing. There's nothing at stake here. They're just being put into a match, basically to have one giant star versus another giant star. I don't see Triple H winning. I see my pick's going to be John Cena. Next, we have the Cruiserweight Championship match of Cedric Alexander versus Kalisto. I would like to see Kalisto win, but I'm going to... I'm saying Cedric Alexander will be the winner here. Then we have the SmackDown Live tag team title match of the champions, the Bludgeon Brothers of Harper and Rowan. Uh, first of all, why is it Harper and Rowan no longer are being called Luke Harper and Eric Rowan, okay? It's just like Elias and other superstars where they just decide, you know what, you only have one name now. Doesn't make sense to me. But they will be defending the titles against the Usos. And sadly, Naomi will not be at ringside. Based on what just happened this past week on SmackDown, where Naomi helped distract the Bludgeon Brothers, so that the Usos could kind of get one up on them, you would really want to see Naomi at ringside. However, and we're going to get to that in a minute here, but however, she will not be at the event. So my pick for this one, I would like to see the Bludgeon Brothers retain. I was, I've been really impressed with what the Usos have done lately, but I think the Bludgeon Brothers, they need a good run as tag champions. So my pick is going to be Harper and Rowan. Then we have the tournament final for the vacant WWE Raw Tag Team titles, which were previously held by Braun Strowman and the little kid Nicholas, who, you know, they forfeited the titles the next night on Raw after Mania. Uh, so we have Cesaro and Sheamus, The Bar, versus Bray Wyatt and Woken Matt Hardy. Uh, my money's obviously going to be on Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy, okay? They're pushing this new uh, alliance with uh, Woken Matt Hardy's character and Bray's new twist character or whatever he's doing now uh i don't see why they would just stop it all of a sudden just to put the titles back on the bar so i'm going with bray wyatt and matt hardy next up we have the wwe united states championship match of jeff hardy defending against gender mahal now a lot of people are expecting gender to to win the title here because they think oh he only lost to hardy on raw because they wanted to have gender win in saudi arabia I, I don't get that. I mean, he's not from Saudi Arabia. He's he's from Canada, so I don't think that has anything to do with it. Uh, but I want to see Jeff Hardy retain. I don't think uh, Jeff should lose the title so quickly, and uh, I don't see any reason why Jinder Mahal should have a title at all. So, yeah, my pick is Jeff Hardy. Next up, we have the WWE Championship title match. AJ Styles defending against the ball-punching Shinsuke Nakamura. <laughs> For some reason, they have Shinsuke delivering low blow after low blow to to AJ Styles every single week since WrestleMania and it's just okay we get it you want him to be a heel and a heel does low blows but it's getting a little repetitive now now also I want to point out we just had new theme music given to Nakamura last night on Smackdown uh I had to say when I first heard it watching it live I thought this was really weird, okay? I And I hated the fact that they had Corey Graves on um, commentary say, oh, look, Nakamura personally asked to have new music made because he didn't want the WWE Universe cheering along with his, his music as he entered. It's like, you know what? He's such a talented guy when it comes to wrestling and everything else. He doesn't need to change his music just to make it more obvious that he's going heel, Okay. Uh, it's fine. There's been heel factions like DX and NWO and other other ones that fans enjoy their music. They cheer along with it, chant along with it, whatever. It, it still works, so I don't see why they had to change it. After hearing it a few more times today, I actually have kind of warmed up to it. I think it does sound pretty cool, but I still say they could have just stuck with the original music and entrance and everything and still make them you know, be a heel if they want to. 
My pick for this now is very difficult because it could go either way, but I'm going to say AJ Styles will retain the title. That's my pick. Next, we have the WWE Intercontinental title ladder match. Now, this technically was supposed to be a ladder match at WrestleMania. Originally, it was supposed to be Finn Balor, Seth Rollins, and The Miz in a triple threat ladder match at WrestleMania. But they felt because they had advertised a six-man ladder match for the North American title at NXT TakeOver the night before, they felt, oh, oh that's going to be too much already. So one will overshadow the other one. We can't do that. So we'll leave the ladder match with TakeOver, but we won't do a ladder match at WrestleMania. Now, yeah, there was never any advertisement for it, but that was being considered for the matchup at Mania. So for this matchup, we have Seth Rollins versus Finn Balor versus Samoa Joe versus The Miz. My pick for this, I'm going with Seth Rollins. I don't think he needs to lose the title. Uh, I want to see him retain and keep the Intercontinental title for a little while longer. Next up, we have Steel Cage match for the WWE Universal Championship match. We have Brock Lesnar, the champ, defending against Roman Reigns. Now, this is a matchup I am just completely tired of. Uh, I don't know how much longer they're going to continue to do this with Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. I think it's ridiculous that they just re-signed Lesnar to another crazy contract where he you know, makes only a couple of appearances at a time. He only has to do certain pay-per-view matches, whatever. And that's fine, okay? It's all good if that's what he's able to get and, and get paid for it. Fine. You know, more power to him. Congrats. Uh, you know, hey, if anybody can make a lot of money in a short time for a little work, more power to you. But if you're going to have him as your universal champion, then put him in other matches uh, with other people, with other opponents. Do different storylines. Do something else except repeatedly try to make Roman Reigns the guy that conquers the beast and you actually think for one second you're going to get the crowd to cheer for it. They're not, okay? Even though we're in another country on the other side of the globe, it's still not going to work, okay? And I don't think there's any reason or point to make Roman Reigns champion because what's going to happen when he comes back to the States on Raw the following week, okay? He's going to get booed out of the building just like he does anyways. So yeah, even though this is in a steel cage match and everything else, uh, I, I'm still picking Brock Lesnar to win. He's going to retain the title. All right, well, that brings us to the main event I'm sure it'll be the main event or the last match of the night, uh, the way they're advertising it, at least it should be. And that is the Greatest Royal Rumble match. And that's a 50-man Royal Rumble matchup. That's right, 50 participants. Uh, it's going to be a long match, and it should be interesting to see what kind of things they do to keep us entertained with 50 participants being in this match. There's so many different people that are going to be in this match, it's hard to pick who is going to be the winner uh, there's so many possibilities they could go, and we also know that there will be at least a couple of, quote, surprise appearances. Now, rumored, okay, that I've I've found out or I've read about, there's a possibility of the Great Khali being there, Rey Mysterio. There's even talk that maybe Undertaker might get into the match, Brock Lesnar might get into the match, or whoever. There's, they're saying all these different names that might do double duty even uh, to be in their own match earlier in the night and then also be in the Rumble, which I'm fine with that. So it's really hard to decide and pick exactly who's going to win. All right, let's go first with my final four men in the ring. Okay, these will be the final four guys left in the ring. I'm going to say Daniel Bryan, Braun Strowman, Chris Jericho, and Kevin Owens. So if those four are no longer in the match, then I've already lost my prediction there. But those are going to be my final four there. Now, out of those four, who do I think is going to win? I'm going to go with Daniel Bryan, Okay. It probably won't happen, but I'm going to go with Daniel Bryan. I'd like to see Kevin Owens get that spot, but I'm going to go with Daniel Bryan. All right, so there you have it. That is my predictions for the 10 advertised matches for this show. Uh, let me know in the comments your predictions. Who do you think is going to win? What do you think is going to happen? Do you think there's going to be any storyline progression going on through this show? Will we see anything happen from here that later on carries over to Raw and SmackDown the following week? Now, like always, whenever I do these prediction and recap videos, I always send out tweets to let people know I'm going to be recording them, and I ask anybody out there, send me questions or topics to address in the video. Okay, so we had a couple of questions on Twitter from Georgia Girl. She asks, should WWE have let the women have a match? And her second question is, what do you think would have happened if they did? All right, well, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that we were going to talk about how there's no women on this card, and I even mentioned how Naomi should be part of the Usos. Like, she should be in the corner of the Usos for their tag title match based on everything that's happened on SmackDown, right? Well, let's let's go over some, some things right here real quick. So her first question was, do I think that WWE should have had women's matches on here? No, I don't. Okay, now, should women have matches on every pay-per-view? Yes, obviously. 
Now, do I think that they should have a match at a wrestling event being held in Saudi Arabia? No, I do not. Now, I do not think they should do that because it is illegal, okay? If you're not familiar with Saudi Arabia, okay, it is a place where, unfortunately, women have very limited rights, and as a result of this, it omits female superstars from participating in the event. They're not allowed to be there. They can't be anywhere in the building partaking in any of the wrestling at all. And if they were to go ahead and bypass that, if WWE was to go ahead and say, hey, you know what, let's bring in five or six women and we'll throw together a little six women's tag match, guess what? They would get shut down in a heartbeat. The women would be arrested and God knows whatever else could happen, okay? So it is a very scary, realistic situation that you have to consider, okay? As much as we are very forward in thinking here as far as the way we want equality with men and women, and I do believe in that, everyone should be equal okay there's no man greater than any woman vice versa okay it's all equality here but at the same time we have to respect other cultures other places and their you know traditions and unfortunately that's something that still exists in that part of the world and there's nothing that we can do about it there's nothing that we have the right to do okay that's someone else's that's another culture i have nothing to do with you have nothing to do with etc okay but do I think WWE should have gone ahead and done matches? No, of course not, because I don't want to see anything bad or scary happen to the female employees of WWE, okay? It's not their fault, and you know they would be on matches if they were allowed to. So it's not anything against any of the females at all. And I think I just answered your, your other question there, Georgia Girl, is what would happen if they did? Obviously, again, they'd be shut down, uh, the women would be arrested, and who knows what else. Now. Let me go over this real quick. I want to share with you in case you have not checked out the uh, ticketing for this event. You can go online and buy the tickets. And if you're not familiar with this, when you buy tickets for this event, okay, you can purchase uh, tickets for a single male, okay, as in men can go see this show by themselves, but they can only buy tickets for the upper level and nosebleed sections. They can't buy any floor seats by themselves. Families are allowed to attend the show, as in, you know, husbands and wives with their kids, they are allowed to attend the show. Women are allowed to attend the show. However, they must be accompanied by a male. So they, again, no women allowed on their own to attend the show. Keep that in mind, okay? So whenever you bring up the, the topic of why can't the WWE superstars that are females partake in the event, look at the audience, okay? The audience alone can't be there by themselves if they're a female. So how do you expect the women to be able to do the same when they're wrestling in the, in the ring, okay? So it's unfortunate, and I wish that, you know, things will change, and they won't have to worry about this someday, and then everybody can be a part of the show. But unfortunately, that is the world that, you know, they live in right now. So thank you so much, Georgia Girl, for your question. And anyone out there, anytime I do these prediction videos, if you haven't uh, followed me before on Twitter, follow me, Pop Culture Junk 2 And anytime I do these prediction videos and review videos, you can send me questions and topics to address on the uh, video here. All right, everybody. Well, thanks so much for listening. I hope you enjoy the show. Make sure to check back with me. I will be posting my recaps uh, on the actual peer review and sharing with you my thoughts and my feelings on everything. Also, remember, you can follow along me on Twitter again. I will be live tweeting during the show itself. I'm always live tweeting during every wrestling pay review network special so forth so follow me there and you can see my feelings and reactions right there as we're watching the show okay guys and gals i hope you enjoy the show thanks for checking out my prediction video i'll see you next time this is the one and only pop culture junkie saying remember to me wrestling is always going to be real see you guys bye